Hey guys, we're back here on the Hunter Call of the Wild, and I'm Lady Legend. The topic for today's video is need zones. We're gonna talk about what need zones do, why they're important in the game, and what all the different need zones are. Now the way to discover a need zone, as you can see, we just spotted that elk, and you heard that ding, that was the need zone for that elk's drink zone going onto the map. Now the other way to discover a need zone is to step on its need zone indicator, or sometimes you could just step on tracks and that will activate the need zone indicator and you will get the zone. And if you do enjoy today's video or learn anything at all, guys, I am gonna ask you to smash that like button. It is so amazing for the algorithm and the videos and I do appreciate it so much. So thanks guys, we are gonna head right into it. All right, so once you have discovered a need zone, so then what? So basically, when you have a need zone, it tells you when that species will drink and in what location. Okay, so basically, this elk will always drink at this zone. That is where he drinks. Now, he won't necessarily be specifically right by this zone. He can be in 200 meters in either direction. They can be anywhere around here. And they won't always be in the same spot, but they will always be at this zone during this time. Now, they won't necessarily always be there right at 4 a.m., but they will come in at some point and drink there until 8 o'clock. So basically, need zones are where animals spend their time, and every species in the game has a specific schedule. Now, I do have all of this information in my Discord, but as you can see here, it is now 8.32. 8.32, right there. So elk are no longer drinking. There's that zone there, it ended at eight. And that elk is gone. He's gone off to his next need zone. So there are three different types of need zones. We have drink zones, we have feed zones, and we have rest zones. Now, let's have a look at a Roosevelt elk schedule. So for example, and this information is in my Discord, guys. I have these sheets for every species in the game. So elk drink from four until eight, then they feed from eight until 12, rest from 12 until 1600, feed from 1600 until 2000 and rest from 2000 until four o'clock. And then they do it all over again and every elk on the map runs by this schedule. Now the reason why drink zones are better to hunt than other zones is it is so much easier to find them because you can just literally go to different bodies of water during any particular animal's drink time and you will likely find the animal. They're just so much easier to spot when they're around water. Now the other thing that's interesting about drink zones is when you have a drink zone in any particular location, that animal is going to feed in the same area, usually about 400 meters back. But as you can see by looking at the river here, there are all kinds of feed and rest zones. So you will see other species while you are hunting drink zones. Now the reason why this is important guys is as soon as you discover a need zone, that animal or that herd of animals will always be in that zone. If you spook them off, they will be back there next time you start your game or they will eventually come back to that zone. Now animals can be spooked off and they can join other zones, but at the start of your next game session, they should be back in their original zone. And I've actually seen this with my own eyes. Now, not every water source is going to have the specific species you're hunting drinking there, but they are gonna drink somewhere on the map. And if you do head out and search water sources, you will eventually find that species drinking. Now, the way Leighton is set up, they actually have every species drinking for four hours, rotating around the clock. So there is always something drinking here in Leighton Lakes. Okay guys, so let's talk about hunting pressure. All right, let's take down this moose here. So this moose is feeding here. He is near water, but he doesn't have a drink zone. So he probably does drink around this lake. Didn't get the hard shot, but we did get him. So he is gonna die. How hunting pressure works is when you mark the very center of the hunting pressure, that's gonna lead you to where the animal was shot, not where the animal died. And you can track it from the center of the hunting pressure. Now with need zones, you do have to protect your need zones from hunting pressure. So normally you can only shoot three animals from any need zone. The fourth kill will kill the zone. And when I say kill the zone, what I mean is this zone will vanish. If I were to kill four animals right here, any zones within the purple hunting pressure will vanish. Now they will eventually come back 
Sometimes they come back within 400 meters and sometimes they come back really far away, but they always do come back. You just have to rediscover it. I find usually they don't go too far. They really don't. Now, when you do shoot animals from any hunting structure, a tripod, a hunting structure that's right on the map or even a tree stand, you can then shoot 15 animals and the 16th kill will kill the zone. And that is the same with using bows. You do get the same hunting pressure as using a hunting stand when you use a bow. Now, if you use a bow in a hunting structure, you can basically just keep killing them forever. You're never going to blow that zone out. <laughs> now, as far as tent and tripod placement goes, guys, I like to set my tents about 250 meters away from any need zone. And I do like to put the tripod about 175 meters away if that is a zone I am farming. Now farming, what I mean by farming is jumping into the tent, running up into the tripod and killing the males, and then going to the next zone and doing the same over and over and over again in an effort to spawn diamonds and rares. Now I have found that the more zones you discover on your map, guys, the more zones are going to pop up. So you can actually have a more active map by discovering more need zones. Now when you do kill any animal out of a need zone, guys, that animal will respawn. Now it will respawn in the same weight class. It will get either a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. But if you do keep killing males, they will eventually get bigger and you will spawn diamonds and rares. You just gotta keep your need zones alive. Now the other thing I wanted to point out is with the last update, stack need zones were done away with for the most part. So if you look down here at the need zone indicator, it shows two different species. We have moose, 8 to 1230, and black-tailed deer from 1630 to 2000. Now, this is a great improvement before the only thing you would see would be the last animal discovered and everything else would be hidden. So now we can see two, but if there is more than two species drinking at a particular drink zone, it will only show the first two discovered. And the rest of the zones in there will be hidden, and I noticed that in Mississippi. So it is a great step in the right direction, but it is not perfect. So this is my Discord, guys. So if you go down here in the bottom left corner to all species info, I do have one of these sheets for every reserve and they are completely up to date. So let's go up here to Leighton Lakes. So there it shows every single species. It has all of their zone times for every single zone for every species. It has their max weights, their diamond trophy ratings, all of their rare variations. Pretty much everything you need to know is in these sheets. Now, I didn't make them. A uh, huge shout out to Tokyo. Thank you for making these for us, dude. You are awesome. And I also do have a need zone time channel here. And every single need zone time for every species it is organized by reserve. So, so the Discord is an awesome resource. Definitely everything you need to know. There is a max levels chart, rare fur variations. It is all here to help you. And I will leave the link to my Discord below the video. But understanding need zones is a really, really important part of the game. It can definitely help you to help you find animals in order to level up as a new player or to find diamonds and rares as a seasoned player. Oh, and one last thing I did want to mention, guys, is when you kill every single animal from a need zone, that need zone will vanish. So that essentially kills the zone and you will have to rediscover it. I once took a rash shot on a diamond Rocky Mountain Elk because he was fleeing and I had no idea that he would come back to that zone because I didn't understand need zones. So they really are important. But I really hope that does help you to understand them. And if you did enjoy the video or learn anything at all, guys, please smash that like button. It is so amazing for the videos and the algorithm. All that interaction, I do appreciate. And definitely let me know in the comments if you do have any questions about this, guys. I am super happy to help in any way that I can. And if you are new to the channel, guys, be sure to hit that subscribe button, click the like button, and ring that notify bell so you guys never miss another video. That's it for this one, guys. We will definitely see you in the next one. Take care, guys. There's a new need zone.